Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today is our second tutor build. Two tutors, and you know what I was thinking of today? It was this card from the Game of Life. It just always cracked me up when I pulled that one. Anyway, today we're going into the American Tutor or Tutor Revival, which I am building in Windenburg. Even if you don't have Get Together, it is super common for American Tutor homes to be brick or stone, and I'm actually doing base game only today. So if you're concerned that you can't build a good tutor just because you don't have Get Together yet, don't worry, the American Tutor will be right up your alley. Based on late medieval and early Renaissance homes across the Atlantic, Tutor homes as an American residential style took off in the 1920s and 1930s. Primarily a home for the wealthy, the main structure included masonry, but the optional addition of plastered sides with true or decorative half timbers are usually what we think of. The style fell out of favor after World War II in exchange for more patriotic styles, but you can still find Tudor homes around, primarily across the Northeast and Midwest US. Other key elements of these large homes include overall asymmetrical style with prominent front-facing tall gabled roofs, multiple chimneys, dormers, and grouped windows. Windows were rarely double hung originally and could have their panes arranged in square or diamond patterns, but recently double hung windows have won out as they allow for better airflow, screens, temperature control, all that stuff. The front door usually had some protection from the elements by being set into the stone or brick wall or having a cover of either a roof or an oriel window. It is super common to see doors and other elements have some medieval castle vibes like thick wooden planks and broad arches. Due to the original homes being built in a cold climate, traditionally these homes have very little outdoor living space like a front porch. However, American family homes, especially for the middle and upper classes like the style was originally built for, often do have large back decks and pools. The gardens can be lush and diverse modeled after famous English cottage garden styles or lean more American with suburban elements like shrubs covering the foundation and a more limited selection of flowers and other decorations. Inside the more rustic styles you'll find stone or brick walls, plaster, or most commonly just painted drywall. I am building on a 30 by 20 lot today actually right next to the tutor we did last time and in true American fashion this will be a pretty large house that's going to take up most of the lot so if you want to move this to a larger lot you can totally do that as well but for the sake of a side by side I'm going to be building on this 30 by 20. When you're laying the base of your build I recommend doing a bunch of sort of staggered rectangles because that'll give you a lot of that in and out. So starting on the farthest left portion I'm going to draw a 9 by 6 rectangle and then pull in a little from the back and do a 6 by 8. This one will be 7 by 8 starting one tile behind like that and then I'm going to do a 3 by 7 and a 6 by eight. Now my entry is actually going to be right here like this and I'm also going to extend an office over here so that will be four by three. I'm also adding a chimney to the back of this room. Sometimes I'll push a fireplace back into a chimney, sometimes not. That totally depends on you but for now we'll just draw that there. Next grab your half walls. I'm just going to be using a fairly short one and I'm going to draw in sort of landing spaces for stairs. Again they won't be too big uh, like we discussed in the introduction. Not a lot of outdoor living space traditionally, especially on the front, but we'll put some in the back. So we'll do this here and one more on the back over here. And that's how you should be looking. So if I page up, you can see how there's lots of like in and out and in and in and out and in and out. Um, there's probably a better word for that, but I don't remember what it is. The last thing to add over here is going to be a bay window. Now the main difference you're going to see in these bay windows and oriel windows in American builds as opposed to the more traditional style in England, and this isn't always the case but generally, um, whereas you would have in the English style it'll be quite boxy like this, in American styles you're more likely to see them actually like this, like that traditional shape that, well, traditional for those of us in the States um, that we actually tend to think of. Let's do our second story. So for the most part, we're just going to be tracing along these same lines. So we'll place a room here and here, but this is going to be a partially open front entry and I'm actually going to add a little room here so we can have a window, but there will be a roof there. And then this is actually a chimney that is going to become more narrow as it rises. You can draw another little rectangle here. Same thing with this chimney where it'll become more narrow as it goes up. So just draw a little two by one square square rectangle there instead of a three by one and we're going to add another bay window off the back here. I'm going to get rid of these chimney walls because they give us a little bit more space and this wall right here. Now for the floor plan for the upstairs, four tiles down this is going to be a bedroom and this is going to be a bedroom that will actually extend over that small sort of deck we put in the front of the office. So this is a more traditional sort of square oriel window that's protruding out. And again, this is the more sort of American shape, um, partial octagon is what I call this one, just because that's the roof shape that like correlates to it. I guess technically it's a trapezoid. Fine, okay, so the trapezoid versus the box. Anyway, nobody cares. So this will be a two by four bathroom. And over here, I'm going to do for the uh, sort of main bedroom, a 
three by four ensuite, and then a small closet area as well. Go ahead and remove this wall right here. And we're actually going to open this up to the floor below um, for the sort of entry hall area and stairs. So go ahead and select the room and then we're going to remove the floor. Grab the flat square. Actually, you know what? You guys like it when I put lights in here for some strange reason. All right, now, now you can grab the flat square and I'm going to start back here. Go ahead and draw that wall back in and extend it over. And my goal is going to be to have a three tile wide space open right here, which will make more sense when we actually do the, like the stairwell. Anyway, you can pull this out and you have to keep replacing the walls as you delete them. And you should be able to keep this. There we go, we got to keep those walls. So anyway, if I turn the grid off, you can see it a little bit better, um, but this is all sort of a custom placed room. And then this in the, the hole here in the middle is nothing. Technically, you could do this same thing with a fence. However, I prefer to do it this way. I just find it's less prone to bugging if I just like preemptively activate all of the bugs. So the last thing to do is grab this little old piece to make a two by one. And we're going to place that right here. Just kidding. It didn't place properly because I didn't have the grid on. Come on, brain. There we go. And you can put the ceiling back. So from the front, this is what your second floor should be looking like. Now, if you wanted to expand this and have a larger family, the easiest way to do that would be to just carry this hallway through and actually build more rooms on top of the garage. Totally can do that. I'm not going to today. And downstairs, let's go ahead and finish up this floor plan. We're gonna take a wall and extend it straight back, except for the last two tiles. We'll just sort of bump in like that. This is going to be a main story bathroom, a full bath, a good candidate for a laundry area as well. This will be sort of a walkthrough hall, library sort of thing. This will be the main family area and then a little office space. And over here will be the kitchen and dining. Now I've chosen to leave the kitchen and dining open to one another because this is more of an American build. Um, I'm doing this quite modern. So this, this home would definitely either be constructed recently or have been renovated. So an open floor plan, sort of kitchen and dining, totally, totally a thing. And of course the huge family living space as well. Now that the floor plan is taken care of, let's talk about the roof. One of the main differences with the roof that you're going to see from the traditional English style is you're going to see more hip roof pieces and half hip roof pieces. This would be pretty much exclusively open gables with occasionally the closed faces. You're going to see a lot of front facing open gable pieces, but on the sides, not as much. Of course, this totally depends on your floor plan, your build style, all that stuff. I'm going to start right here in our little entry area because this is actually a pretty unique roof shape as well. Um, you can hold alt when you place the roof to just keep the same height. That'll make that a lot easier. Copy, rotate, place, and grab a final gable roof piece. Again, to keep the height, hold alt. That will make all the pitches line up. Now, the reason I wanted to highlight this roof piece first is because it's quite common for this front area to actually have a curved, very, very steeply pitched gable. We're not going to replicate this roof pitch anywhere else in the build. The rest of them will still be very, very tall. Um, but not quite this tall. Once you have your roof piece selected though, press shift C and then you can pull this little ball up on either side to sort of curve that eave out. And if you want to curve it more, you can use this middle one to just sort of drop it in a touch. If you do that, I recommend getting rid of the eaves of your top gable because then it'll line up better. But you can see there's just like that little bit of a curve there. Very classic of the American style. You'll see that a lot. Now to the top, we are going to start with a hip roof piece and cover the largest possible portion as always, which is going to be this. Pull out your eaves one and then pitch it as far up as it will go. Yes, for real. Now this chimney will eventually keep being built up. Don't worry, it's not just going to be that stubby, but this is literally how high we are pitching the roof today. It's huge. And then for the rest of your roof pieces, you're gonna take a gable, extend it and pitch it until it lines up. To get it to line up exactly, you may have to hold alt, but it should line up eventually. Now this particular roof piece, I'm just going to pull all the way through because I like having more of the open gable faces, whether you do or don't, again, totally up to you. Um, but at the very least, you wanna have some open gable faces toward the front of the build. Once you have that sorted out, you could just use that exact same roof piece and copy and place it to cover the rest of the top level of roofing, something like this. And if you want to, you can add a dormer. As I mentioned in the last video, I'm just not a fan of having like huge open expanses of roof just hanging out. So I do like having little dormers and you'll just roof that with the exact same gable piece. Now over here for the garage, I'm actually going to continue the fairly steep pitch over here and we will use a half hipped roof piece. My ability to speak has just gone out the window. Um, to go in this direction. So again, pull, pull the eve out one, 
my ability to build has also gone out the window, and we're going to pull this up until that pitch matches. Now you may notice that it doesn't line up with the rest of the roof. What you could do is pull it in like that, however, then you're going to get this because the roof is too tall. We don't want that. And if you push it back to here, what's going to happen is when you paint this roof piece, whatever color you paint it, probably not blue, um, that's going to show through. So what I recommend doing here is actually pushing this back and then pulling these eaves forward until it lines up. It'll have a little bit of a gap, but it's a nice quick fix. Could you also go the multiple roof piece option, create a clubhouse out here in the garage, of course, uh, but that's like the fast way to fix it. And then from there, you just copy that same piece, place it on the level above. And when you size it down, you'll see it almost lines up. Uh, this is just going to be a little bit of a finicky thing. It has to do with the grid being the grid. Um, so just like pitch it down one at a time on either side, back and forth until you do get it to line up and do the same thing with this roof piece here. Now that difference in pitch is not going to be noticeable enough that you're going to tell just from looking like, oh my gosh, this one and this one are off by two degrees. Um, so don't, don't panic. I know the nerd in you is trying to panic, don't let it happen, it's going to be okay. But that solves some of our roofing issues. We do have some other roof pieces to tackle here. First off, this chimney, this just weird joint looks oddly disjointed. So what I'm going to do is shrink this roof piece down to be a one tile by one tile piece, and then bring in all of the eaves and pitch it up until it meets up with some other part of the chimney. Pretty much like that. Often I like to actually use the metal roofing pieces, um, but that'll just give your chimney a more, it'll just give it a nicer shape. We'll discuss the chimneys again in a minute. First though, let's talk about this roof piece. Place your octagon, pull the eaves out. But when we look inside the build, you might notice that this is clipping through. This is the octagon roof. You adjust the pitch, it doesn't do anything. Very annoying, here's how to fix that. You're going to start with a diagonal half-hipped roof piece and place that hipped portion facing out. Shrink it down to just one tile by one tile and pull out that eave. Copy, rotate, and place on the other side. There we go. Then then use a half gable roof, pull in those side eaves, but leave this one out. And then when you pitch it down, you should get it to line up pretty well. So two diagonal half hip roof pieces or hip roof pieces, honestly, you could use either. And then one half gable. Now the downside to this one is those eaves are overhanging quite a bit. The plus side is you don't have to deal with the roof clipping into your house. So pick which one you prefer, I suppose. I'll be going with this one. But of course up here we'll take the easy way because it doesn't matter if that roof piece is clipping into the roof. For the chimney back here, you can just copy that exact same roof piece. And while we're here, let's talk about finishing up these chimneys. So you can go ahead and draw another room on top. And then for the top room, I like to use half walls. However, currently this is as tall a half wall as I can get on this level. And I really want it to go above the roof. Here's how to fix that. Select the wall, go to tall wall. And since we don't actually have rooms on this level, that just unlocks all the rest of your half wall options. So now you can pick the one that you want and it will actually be tall enough. How exciting. This one though, doesn't need to be that tall. It should still be at or above the roof level just you know to get like smoke away from the roof and wind tunnels and channels and all that stuff but i like having that sort of variation in height i think it adds some whimsy now i'm going to go through and use alt to just barely adjust the pitches of these roof pieces to hide some of those seams last thing to do before we add some color to this thing is just raise up that foundation now between this build being american and being primarily in the sort of northeast and midwest states a foundation is actually incredibly important as opposed to the more traditional one now another big difference as we get into wallpapers here next between these two styles is the traditional style how it looks on the outside is because of how it's constructed if you missed this video the reason that the tutor looks like this with all the little wood beams and everything is because those are actually full-on timbers those are huge logs sort of hewn down and planed but then used as the main structure of the house and then in between those would be all the plaster the wattle and daub the stones the bricks all that stuff now that construction style stuck around for hundreds of years but by the time the americans sort of picked up the Tudor style and started running with it, that wasn't really how homes were being constructed much anymore. So the American Tudors were actually primarily made of brick or stone. Of course, light wood framing with drywall and siding and everything could definitely be an option, but if homeowners were looking to replicate that timbered look, they wouldn't actually use timbers. They would just use boards that were stained and then either glued or nailed onto the front of the build. So. Since brick is pretty much the traditional finish for the American Tudor homes, I'm going to be going with brick and actually make this whole thing base game. But if you do want to use any of those get together wallpapers with all of the beams and everything, go for it. But again, since it's not actually structural, it doesn't matter as much. Just put it where you think it looks cool. But I will be going with the traditional American finish of red bricks. Loads of options if you like the grout, 
don't like the grout, it doesn't really matter. I like this one because it's a bit more toned down, like it looks more weathered. And I am literally just going to put this everywhere. Now if you go inside and you notice, hey, some of my paint leaked through, no big deal. You know how good this game is at recognizing rooms, so you can just go through and sort of redraw this little space. And that should fix most of it. And then this is just because I pitched that roof up too high. Um, so if I decide I don't actually want the brick to be showing there, all I have to do is pitch that roof down. Ta-da! Oh, and this one is just a case of the roof being too big, so I'll push that in. Hold shift to push in those eaves. And now the outside is all painted and the inside isn't. For the roof, you're not gonna find thatched roofs pretty much anywhere except in some sort of historical preservation society. The ability to thatch, like that whole art and craft has been mostly lost, honestly, like a lot of places, but especially over here in the States since it wasn't as big a thing to begin with, which is really sad. It's incredible roofing technique and I might just do a video talking about it later or probably, you know what, I'm gonna stop now. I'm gonna save that for going into cottage builds. I'll talk about the ama amazing properties of thatched roofing there. For today, let's talk about shingles. If you're still trying to get ahead of me and do a storybook home before I do the video about it, go ahead and grab those scalloped shingles, curve a couple of roof pieces, it'll be adorable. Um, but if you're sticking for more of the sort of suburban Tudor, just grabbing some nice plain old black shingles is going to be a great option. Now, something I did see on a lot of the reference images I was working from was these bay windows and oriole windows actually had metal roofing on them, which I thought was really cool. It was sort of weathered and green. Um, like weathered copper. I don't know. It looked it looked cool, so I'm going to do that. It's just a fun little textural difference, you know? Now the roof trim, I'm going to be sticking with white, and I'm going to also be doing white window casings. Like I said earlier in the video, I'm trying to go like super up to date with this build, um, although of course I want to point out the historical things as well. So if you're going to go a more historical direction, more of like the original, like you want this to look like it was built in the 1920s, 1930s, you may want to go for a brown roof trim and then brown windows and casings, but I will be going with white. The foundation will be brick, and to cover up this little bit of the white showing through, you can grab the inlaid exterior trim. Now here that's not going to work, so what I have to do is go inside, draw a little room, paint with my trim, and then remove that wall. And now the trim will stay where I want it. You could add columns here if you wanted to. I don't like any of the base game columns uh, for the Tudor style builds. I would recommend going with something from Get Together or anything that's more square and simple. You could also use some of the corbels. Again, these are a little bit ornate, but I like that little bit of detail. Again, if you have the packs that have more simple ones like Seasons or Get Together, highly recommend using those. Now let's talk about doors. Primarily the front door. Now this is going to be a partially open sort of entry, so I'm actually going to start with an arch and I'm going to use the arch E. Actually, I'm going to turn on Move Objects. And now I'm going to use the arch E. Now I don't 100% care for the point at the top, but the main reason I'm still using it is because the medieval front doors that we have in the base game also have the point at the top. So that's what I'm going to do for that front entry area. And now we can talk about windows. No wait, I forgot to do the half wall trims. I'm gonna go with white again. If you're doing a brown roof trim and brown windows, go with a brown half wall trim as well. Okay, now we'll talk about windows. If you want to go the more traditional route with the windows, you're going to wanna grab something with multiple small panes. This one is probably the most like Tudor-esque window that we have, and I will put that in a couple of places here. But aside from that, we don't have a ton of small pane options that aren't also either too modern, like this one, or double hung, which was really uncommon for the historical, um, like the original build style. You'd be more likely to find windows like this with those smaller panes and you would often still find them grouped. So if you want more historical direction, I would go with something probably in the mega collection as usual. I seem to use those a lot, but I am going for a more modern suburban direction. So I'm actually going to be using the double hung windows, which I know I just said aren't historical, but hear me out, ventilation, insulation, um, and I want to. So I'll be using these primarily on the second floor and I'm going to use some of these on the first floor. Another thing I'm going to do is press F5 so that with the move objects on, I can actually overlap these slightly without having to use alt, and that'll give it sort of the look of a larger window, a group of windows, um, but not have them all separated out like this. You could do either way, that's just what I'm going to do, and it'll work for the double hung windows as well. Now for these two wide ones, I will be using alt to get them centered. For this bay window, again, I'm going to use alt to just ever so slightly push these windows in a little bit more so that it's not overlapping over the edge um, too much. Also, do you know what I didn't put back here? A deck. This has just been quite the video. I'm gonna extend it all the way over to this side, up to the chimney. Now, I know I'm going to add a sliding glass door down here to get out of the house, so I can place that. 
and then some taller windows above it. But this is going to be a bathroom, so I'll want a smaller window in there and smaller windows above there so that it doesn't look too weird because all of a sudden I care about that. Now that that's all taken care of, let's talk about this garage section over here. Now I didn't put any doors on here. We're actually going to add those very same arches and this is going to be a covered walkway. Now traditionally when these homes were first built, I don't think well, there were cars, but it wasn't like as big of a deal. So you may have a garage. This may have also been a carriage house. So of course you'd have some sort of covered walkway going to and from that to the house. This is what ours is going to look like today. And then to do a base game only garage door. It doesn't function like you can't open it, but it looks cool. Um, we're actually going to grab the clapboard crush in whatever garage door color you think works best and grab these round columns place on either side. Now, if you're not just using the base game, I recommend using a more simple square column, a smaller one. It's going to look better. Um, but this is base game only. Next, push this roof back a little bit, grab a flat square, and what you want to do is have this just as wide as your garage door so that you can grab the jutting exterior floor trim, place it on that flat square, and now when you pull your roof back into place, you have a garage door. I also like to add these light box windows across the front, and sometimes I even make a little handle out of this. Just put it in the middle and scale it down with my bracket keys. Don't worry, we'll add a driveway when we get to landscaping. Now this is how I've windowed my home. The reason this one only has one window is because it is a bathroom and that felt like an invasion of privacy. And there's the best look at the back that I can give you right now. The game literally updated minutes before I started recording, so I don't have my updated camera mod yet. I think the last doors I need to place out here is this set from the office and a couple of doors leading in and out of the garage. Doesn't really matter where these go, it's gonna depend mostly on your floor plan and traffic flow, but for now I'm going to stick them there. And you know what, these people are fancy, they can have windows in their garage. That's like when you know you've made it. If you have a garage with windows in it, like, dang. I'm gonna start with more of these same columns and I'm going to place them going into the kitchen and dining area as if these were the original arches from when the home was constructed and these were separate, uh, but they're not anymore. And then straight across from this arch, I'll place this one to travel through this little library area into the main living area. Now for the office I am going to use these. Uh, you could use another arch but I feel like it's better to have doors to an office. And then I'll grab some just plain old doors. Hang on, we need to add stairs. I was wondering why the arch placement didn't look the same as it did in my reference photo and that's because my reference photo that I'm working from has stairs. So there are stairs. <laughs> door, 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 but if I page up, I actually have a little dormer here, which is very exciting. And I'm going to turn that into like a little clubhouse, I think. So I'm just gonna grab my ladder, rotate it, and that should line up. It does. So that's just, that's just fun. You know, who, who wouldn't want a secret dormer clubhouse outside the bathroom? Traditionally, originally, probably stone or brick floors in the sort of entry area, right out on these decks, possibly even in the kitchen and bathrooms, and then hardwood floors throughout. However, more modern builds, you could replace that with linoleum or tile, whatever's going to suit your sims and the sort of era that you're trying to convey with your build the best. So I'll be going with a combination of bricks and wood. And once you've picked your wood, don't forget to fix your stairs. I'll be using that exact same wood upstairs. And another reason that I did this this way is so that I can add the fence only, only where I absolutely need it. I'm not actually going to place it in front of the stairs. That's a bug that's been happening again. Um, where you place a fence, then you put the stairs there, and the stairs make it look like the fence disappeared, but it didn't actually, uh, and that's been causing some real issues for some players. So you can just avoid that issue by not having a fence there in the first place. I'm gonna place an arch into my little closet area because I think it's cute, especially if you put like a little curtain over it or something, you know? And I'm not putting windows here because this is a chimney, and something I do to myself a lot is go inside a house, and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna put a window there, but it's a chimney. You don't put windows in chimneys. You can however put windows in kitchens, so let's talk about that. I'm gonna do a nice big kitchen here, um, island, you know, the works. I like to start on one end just by establishing where the refrigerator is going to go. So if I put the fridge there, I could put the trash can there, and just build across with cabinets. I probably wouldn't recommend doing anything too modern in here unless you're doing a contemporary tutor, which is a later video. Stunning style gorgeous. Super excited for that one. Um, so unless you're going for all out contemporary, I would recommend sticking with more traditional cabinets. And it looks like I'm going to have to adjust my windows, but that's fine. Why are you overlapping? I can adjust my windows. That is fine. I don't want it to adjust that high though. So since I move objects on, I can use control nine to just bump it up a little bit. And I'll do that over here as well so that all my windows in this part of the house are the same height. You won't notice that these aren't because they're interrupted by doors. Now, I'm not going to go for a peninsula. I am just going to do a standalone island um, because I feel like it. I suppose I should empty a space for a stove, but there's a nice big kitchen for you. 
Then there's lots of space here for full family dining. Um, you could probably put some other stuff in here if you really wanted to as well. But I'm satisfied with the size of this kitchen. I don't like making them too big. I feel like the Sims just sort of get lost and wander around at some point. Now if you wanted to add cabinets, I'd probably remove these windows, but you could also just do like a little corner of cabinets like that. And after rearranging my kitchen again, now I'll be done. Did I talk about wallpaper? No. Really, for wallpaper, it's whatever you want. Traditionally, like with most older homes, something like this would be a great place to start. Slightly less traditional, get rid of the paneling. Even more modern, just have no baseboards or crown molding or anything. You may also want to add some brick accent walls. That'll bring in a lot of that rustic element, similar to how in this style you'd see the same thing inside as you would outside due to the construction. Um, you can still see that same sort of style element in these builds as well. So I'm gonna add some brick in the kitchen. I think that's nice. And I'm going to add some brick where my chimneys are. So some brick here and some brick in there and here. Now on the main floor, I'm going to go with the larger fireplace. So I'll have one here and one here, but then upstairs. I'm going to place a smaller one. Now in a kid's room, if this was a kid's room, I would probably recommend going for an electric fireplace. That just feels safer, but I don't have that option in the base game. So that's what you're getting kids. Don't be stupid. Again, if you had laundry, this would be a great place to put laundry, but if you're just looking to fill it up as a bathroom, I'd probably start with the classic tub shower combo over in the recessed portion over there. That just feels like a good thing to have. Plenty of space for a toilet still over here, and you could do a full double vanity on the side as well. Don't forget the bathroom art. It has to be a true upper middle class home after all. And that's what I'm going with for that bathroom. Upstairs, same thing, different shape. This would be probably the bathroom for the children, so I definitely want to make sure that there is a tub available there in the case of any toddlers. Even though you can technically wash them in the sink now, I feel like it's still just a good practice. The grown-ups get a really nice big bathroom, so something I like to do if I have a large bathroom and big windows is just put the tub in front of it. I don't know why, it makes me feel like it should be on Pinterest or something, I don't know. Shower in the corner, toilet, and we'll give them a nice sink. Hopefully they won't wash dishes in here. I think that's all the bathrooms and there's only one kitchen in this one. So this is how we are doing so far. Still have to do landscaping, of course, we'll finish up the outside, touch up. Uh, make sure that there isn't anything else completely obvious that I missed. But before we do that, if you're enjoying this video, if you don't mind the crazy energy too much, don't forget to give the video a like, subscribe if you haven't already, leave your questions, suggestions, and corrections in the comments down below, and now we can talk about landscaping. I'm going to just start in the backyard here with this deck. Um, I'm going to cover this with decking boards because it would have been added on after the initial construction, so I'm not concerned about it having the bricks like the other smaller sort of porches that we have here and there. I'm also going to add a pool right there in that corner and that leaves plenty of space over here for a barbecue or whatever else. Now if you wanted an additional exit or entry, depending on which direction you're going, I guess, from the family room, a good place to put that would be right there. And I do need to add some stairs. I'm going to add brick stairs to the older parts of the build and some slatted stairs to the newer ones. Now for the side of these stairs, you could leave it that red brick, that looks fine, or you could actually use the brickery in the gray swatch to make it match the foundation or whatever other color foundation you may be using. There's a nice little back deck. Now for the front yard, we're actually going to start with the terrain to fix up our little driveway over here. Well, fix up, doesn't exist yet. Grab the flattened terrain tool, I like to use a square for this, and starting inside, you're going to bring it out. This is one of those things that would work a little bit better if it was on a larger lot, um, but I already explained my reasoning for that, so I won't go over that again and bore you. Sometimes it can really help to actually draw in a little bit of a driveway. It doesn't matter the paint texture, um, so that as you smooth it, you can sort of like go down and see, oh wow, that's not going to work, um, and then just keep going. I do like smoothing from the side. I feel like that helps me get the best uh, results, but I'm sure you'll find your own technique that works for you. Also, short and steep driveways are super common. Um, so that's totally fine. All right, now we can talk about some plants. If possible, it's great to go in an English garden influenced direction. Um, so this is what we did last time with all these flowers and whatever, but we're going to, of course, Americanize it a tad. I'm actually going to use the smooth keeper fence to sort of outline areas to landscape instead of simply having um, like dirt to outline where I want to put it. I recommend starting away from the house and then as you draw it in, it'll connect. Why do I have a little hill there? I do not remember putting a hill there, but I guess I will flatten that down. Okay, anyway, back to my fence. But I'm going to start by blocking off some areas and then I can use some dirt terrain paint to paint in there. Another popular American thing is, since we have foundations over here most of the time, to use shrubs to sort of hide that. Now we have these sort of hedgerows and these longer hedgerows. You can resize these or you can go in with the bushes 
can sort of make your own hedgerow. So I'm going to use a combination of the full size and one size down hedges to sort of go through and hide that foundation like that. Next I'll actually add some flowers. Hydrangeas are a really popular option so I will grab a couple of those. And you might notice that these landscaping areas aren't as big. Of course you can make them much bigger if you want to. Um, I'm just going for sort of what's most common in my area since this is a really popular house style in my particular neck of the woods. And you might want to grab one other smaller flower plant. Um, I think I'm actually going to use these pansies and use them as sort of my, uh, my filler as well as a secondary flower option. So I'll just go through and place these. This garden isn't going to be quite as dense as the more English cottage garden style. Um, you'll see a little bit more dirt showing through. And if you want to grab a couple of small rocks, that's totally cool as well. I think I'm going to add a bird bath over here. You're not going to see gardens like this unless you're next door to a sort of flower enthusiast or a nature enthusiast who is um, sort of reclaiming natural flowers. For the most part, you're going to see it be much more controlled, more spaced out, more geometric. Um, so this is generally more the direction you're going to see the landscaping take. Now over here by the garage, I am going to add a couple of bushes just down here. All right, now we have to go through with terrain paint. As always, go around the foundation and whatever, but I also recommend doing some paths. You could use the brick sort of floor texture for this, but we also have, thought we had, oh yeah, we do. Okay, I was gonna say, we also have, uh, we do also have a brick paint if you want it to look like more old and worn into the ground or gravel, but honestly, the most American thing is going to be good old sidewalk slabs. Ta-da! So we'll grab some sidewalk. Oh, not that big. Grab some more sidewalk for over here, and honestly, you may even see this in the backyards as well. Sidewalks everywhere. And also not. We see sidewalks on people's lots, but then we don't actually have sidewalks. I don't mean to be anti-American in this video. It it's an accident. Add some more bushes over here. Now if I'm going to do a terrain paint driveway, I do like to go down with that dark layer of the dirt first and then go back over it with whatever sort of driveway texture I'm going to use. Probably just gravel today since I don't have any concrete uh, in just the base game. Now from here I'm going to go through with my dirt and paint and under all of my plants and paths and foundations. Finally, don't forget to add your chimneys. Now, if you want your chimneys to show, you could of course raise them up. I don't really mind if they show or not. I just like to add them inside my chimneys to make sure that I get that smoke um, when I light my fireplaces. So I'll throw some chimneys in and I feel like it needs a tree. Aspen for the win. All right, let's do one last spot the difference from the outside and then we'll do a recap on the American style specifically. So first off, what are some of the similarities? Mainly the very tall pitched roof with the multitude of front facing gables. Also, it's more likely to have a garage, believe it or not. You'll find your home is on a foundation as opposed to on the ground or an extremely low foundation. And it's more likely to not only be a much larger build, um, more spread out, but have much, much larger living spaces and the construction will be almost entirely brick. Differences that you can't see in the game include if you were to use any of the half timber walls on your American Tudor build, it would be because you can just paint the walls and glue timbers on. It's not necessarily because that's how the home was constructed, um, but again, that doesn't matter so much to the game. Also having some sort of uniquely shaped gable over the front door, very, very common. If we look inside again, we can highlight those wide open living spaces, multiple large bathrooms, a large back deck is a very American thing. And then upstairs having this area, oh, it's confused there, it's because I used baseboards. All right, I can fix that. There we go. Having this space open actually to the main entry hall, having that entry hall feel more grand and open um, and be two stories tall, very common with the American Tudor style. You can see where the landscaping has some cottage inspiration um, in a multitude of flowers and colors, but for the most part, it's going to be much more streamlined, much more toned down. As always, this is The Sims 4. You can do whatever you want, but I appreciate you building with me today. If you want to check this build out, as always, it will be on the gallery. Information in the description, blah, blah, blah. You know the drill. Oh no, not the drill! If you haven't already, I highly recommend checking out the video for the English Tutor here. I know I referenced it a lot in this video, so if you haven't already seen it, that might make some of these other things make more sense. And if you have seen it, but you'd like to check out more of these videos, you can check out the full playlist down here. Thanks one more time for building with me today, and I look forward to building with you again very, very soon. Bye.